mental health issues. We've got a lot of different uh, topics to talk about. One of the first ones I want to talk to uh, Dr. Uh, or to pharmacist Ben Fuchs about is uh, the South Carolina shooter was reported to have been on Suboxone, Subutex. Uh, what is the implication of that? We always have the central government coming out pressing for gun control, as well as uh, the people in all the states after every one of these shooting events. They never look at the thing that is the underlying connection, and that is the uh, psycho drugs that they're on, whether it is SSRIs or whether it's something like uh, Suboxone. Suboxone is something that's a little bit different than we've seen with uh, most of these other shooters. So I want to get uh, pharmacist Ben Fuchs' uh, opinion on that. Before we do, I want to let you know this segment of the Alex Jones Show is brought to you by the products that we sell at InfoWarsLife.com. Products like Super Male Vitality. We have that in stock now. We have many products that are out of stock. This is in stock. It's a good time for you to stock up. Summer's here. It's now the time to transform your body. Time to get healthy. Super Male Vitality comes in the best organic herbs, combines the best organic herbs and extracts to help make that possible. We have thousands that have used it already. You can look at the feedback. We've got over 500 reviews on InfoWarsLife.com of Super Male Vitality. And if you want to look at those reviews, get a bottle of Super Male Vitality. Get them while supplies last at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. Again, joining us now is Anthony Gucciardi with Natural Society and pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Welcome, Ben. Hey, thank you, David. Hey, good to see you, Anthony. Thank hey, you for Ari. joining us. As I said, we've got a lot of different uh, uh, topics to talk to you about. First one I wanted to talk uh, to you about, though, was this uh, drug that the South Carolina shooter was on. Tell us, uh, as a pharmacist, what you know about this drug, Suboxone. Well, yeah, so, Suboxone is a uh, combination drug. It's partially something called Welbutrin. Perhaps you've heard of that. Uh, and then an, uh, the other component is an opiate-like drug, uh, opiate-like substance. The combination is used, as, is used recreationally. This kid, Dylan Roof, was using it recreationally. And that's something we see a lot with these, uh, these people that, quote, go postal, as you, you know, mm -hmm. shoot things up. They seem to always be on some kind, of, some kind of psychopharmacology. And what it really highlights is the fact that you can't mess around with the brain with pharmacology. You know, for the longest time, even doctors looked down their nose at the practice of psychiatry. And even today, many uh, uh, well-meaning medical professionals feel like psychiatry is kind of a pseudoscience. It's based in pseudoscience. And that's because there's no real diagnostic measurements for whether somebody is psychiatric, ha has a psychiatric problem. It's all based on conjecture and speculation. And even the diagnostics they, that they use is based on something called the uh, DSM, the Di Diagnostic and Statistics Manual book, which gets updated regularly uh, to include, by the way, uh, diagnoses like uh, oppositional defiance disorder, internet <laughs> shopping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know that. The ODD. I think you might have that one. I've been yeah. listening, Dave. I, I think you might be do. suffering. Right? <laughs> they want to characterize <laughs> you know me as odd, you know, because I'm, I have an oppositional defiance disorder. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? But you know what that yeah. means? You could be drugged officially, and your insurance mm -hmm. company can, will, will pay for the drugs. In fact, there are cases when you have a diagnosis from a so-called medical professional of oppositional defiance disorder where you can be medicated against your will yes. uh, to, uh, to, to calm you down from this horrible disease, internet shopping disorder, etc., these crazy diagnoses. The point is, is you, you, with any pharmacology, with any drug, you're playing with fire. The human body is not meant to be manipulated this way. And when I talk about pharmacy, uh, pharmaceuticals being poisons, I'm saying that not rhetorically and not poetically, but I'm saying it literally. These things suppress biochemistry, and for some reason or another, we have been hypnotized to believe that we can somehow be better. We can somehow have our health improved by suppressing our biochemistry. Now, this has uh, implications in the human body in terms of uh, the viscera, in terms of the digestive system, and the heart, and the blood pressure, etc. But it has really, really egregious effects when we start to play with the brain this way. The brain is the most complex, uh, or, uh, complex living system in the universe, and to start to drug it, to start to poison it, to use pharmacology to manipulate it, uh, it, it is fraught with danger. It, can, it cannot help but lead to problems like all the things that we're seeing in terms of aggressive behavior and violent behavior. Let me say one more thing. There's these class of drugs called serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and I know you know about these, this mm -hmm. thing called SSRIs. And this is a new class of drugs, relatively new. It came out about 25, uh, 25 years ago, I think the uh, late 1980s. 
Uh, these serotonin reuptake inhibitors exploit or leverage the misunderstanding that people have around this drug, this uh, neurotransmitter, this chemical serotonin. You know, David and Anthony, many people feel like serotonin, based on what they've heard, is a happy hormone, right? It's antidepressant hormone, makes you feel like life is good. Well, as it turns out, that's not the case. The serotonin is a vigilance hormone. It's an awareness hormone. It is the alternative or the antagonistic hormone to melatonin. As most people know, melatonin helps you relax, helps you fall asleep. Well, serotonin does the exact opposite. Serotonin is a daytime and vigilance hormone. And when you start to upregulate or you manipulate the levels of serotonin artificially to raise serotonin levels, which is what these reuptake inhibitors do, you get these hypervigilant states. And hypervigilance is the same as paranoia. And this is why aggressive behavior, violent behavior, paranoid behavior, school shootings, etc., are all associated with up, up regula- artificially upregulating serotonin levels. The bottom line here is, if you have brain chemistry issues, neurotransmitter issues, if you want to work with your brain chemistry, the most powerful medicine in the world for manipulating brain chemistry is called food. <laughs> and it's, uh, or it's called non-food, if you will. And by non-food, I'm talking about corporate swill, as I like to call it, which is the processed food that is pretty much rammed down our throats 24-7 via marketing and via commercials. If you want to manipulate your brain chemistry in a healthy fashion, pay attention to the foods you're eating and pay attention to the foods you're not eating. Yes, that's very true. And, of course, uh, many of the ancient Greek doctors wisely said, let food be your medicine. Correct. And they understood how that would affect people. And when you're talking about these SSRIs, I think one of the, the uh, scariest things about it to me is how it, it affects people while they're on it. But then if someone decides that they want to get yeah. off of this because That's of right. side effects or because of long-term health issues or something, once they get off of it, then everything goes Draw really something. crazy. That's right. You, ha- you end up with these withdrawal symptoms. Mm-hmm. And that's another, uh, another uh, uh, danger that's associated with psychopharmacology is withdrawal from these drugs. And that alone tells you about the potent nature of these substances. David and Anthony, how the heck did we ever get the idea that we can manipulate our body biochemically through pharmacology and somehow be better for it. How did we extrapolate from antibiotics and pain pills, which, by the way, are very important, and praise God that we have pain pills, and to a certain extent antibiotics as well, although now we're, uh, we're uh, reaping the harvest of antibiotic resistance, which you know anybody who understood how these things work could have predicted, and my pharmacy school professors did predict it uh, three decades ago. So leaving that aside, uh, the fact, that aside from pain pills and antibiotics, how the heck did it, it, the potency and the importance of pain pills and the life saving potential of antibiotics get extrapolated to using prescription drugs for every single ailment that we have, for, for degenerative diseases and for psychiatric disorders and for weight loss and all of the things that we apply pharmacology to. How did we get from the point from where uh, pain pills and, and antibiotics save lives to, the, to, the, to 4 billion, 4 billion prescriptions served? And I would present to you that it comes through, through marketing, through branding, through advertising, through routes of, uh, routes of administration administration that have nothing to do with patients and nothing to do with bettering our health and everything to do with the corporatocracy and profit margins. And to me, this is one of the most egregious, one of the nastiest ways that humanity is being manipulated is through pharmacology in an effort to, number one, uh, reap profits and centralize money, but number two, control the population. You know, I would agree with that. And I would also say it is marketing and it is propaganda. And what they're pushing, though, is two things. First, they're ignoring the research, the real research, that the gut is really the center of all mental activity. There's a deep connection between the gut and the brain, as you know. We want to talk about that today specifically and things you can do to enhance your mental health through redistributing gut health with uh, microflora and everything like that. But secondarily, there is this lie that there is a biological free lunch with pharmaceutical drugs, right? I mean, just take painkillers, you'll feel better and everything's fine. Or just take SSRIs and you'll be happier and you'll have increased serotonin and blah, 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 and everything will be fine. There's no discussion of the negative side effects and the reality that when you put something in your body, a biochemical reaction is going to occur. Even if it's something good. I mean, you can have too much of a good thing. But these pharmaceutical drugs are not too much of a good thing. They're too much of a bad thing. And you're trying to use them to get a free lunch when it does not exist. You cannot just be happier or feel better from painkillers and expect it to go on forever. Something devastatingly bad is going to happen to maintain equilibrium in your body. Yeah, exactly. And what what, uh, Ben Fuchs was just saying about 4 billion prescriptions served made me think of 
<laughs> McDonald's, you know. This is McPharma. Is like and you combine that with the junk food, the, the junk yeah. drugs and everything. One of the things that I'm concerned about, of course, is this mandatory vaccine bill that just went through uh, in California. And, of course, you're talking about how they're magnifying uh, the pharmaceuticals for every condition. I see that happening now with vaccines. And, of course, they have every financial incentive to do that because they have no liability uh, for right. anything that happens if it's a vaccine. If it's an antibiotic or it's a other pharmaceuticals, they have liability, but not with vaccines. That This is a very scary situation. It, it truly is. Uh, corporatism out of control. That's government in your blood is what mm -hmm. it is. You see, mm -hmm. the blood is the sacred space. In the Bible, we hear the blood is the life. All disease, I, I say this a lot. I say on my radio program, my presentations, I say all disease is cell disease because I want people to understand that there's no difference in the diagnosis and the different types of diseases, whether it's uh, Alzheimer's disease or osteoporosis or l a fatty liver disease or whatever. It, all at the end of the day is a cell matter. And it doesn't matter where the disease process shows up because it's all happening at the level of a cell. But even more fundamentally, if all disease is cell disease all cell disease is blood disease and cells begin to break down when the blood becomes dirty you know doctors will talk about something called sepsis and they'll say well if you have sepsis that's a life-threatening condition you end up in the ICU you could end up end up dying and they're correct with acute sepsis but with chronic long-term sepsis and sepsis means dirty blood hang on is a hang on uh, pharmacist Ben Fuchs we're gonna be right back we got to take a quick break we'll be right back with pharmacist Ben Fuchs and Anthony Gucciardi stay with us Joining me is pharmacist Ben Fuchs and Anthony Gucciardi with Natural Society. We started out talking about the effects of Suboxone. That was the drug that the South Carolina shooter was on. Just before we went to break, we had started talking about gut health. And uh, I think you had a question that you wanted to uh, ask uh, Ben Fuchs about, Anthony. That's right. So I've always been passionate about gut health because I've understood for a long period of time. I mean, I remember in 2011 reading a study and writing an article that antibiotics were wiping out microflora, good bacteria in the gut. And as a result, they were acknowledging at that point that their immune systems of the immune systems of individuals on high dose of antibiotics was being completely shut down. And then that ties into another article recently. It was a study from a college student. He was eating McDonald's every day for like two weeks. <laughs> Have you heard about this one? Yeah, yeah. And his good bacteria was permanently destroyed by eating McDonald's. I mean, permanently. That means he would have to supplement with probiotics or eat fermented foods to regain that bacteria if that even, even if those strains are applicable. And then, you know, Ben, it's funny, you sent over these articles to talk about today. One of these from Science Daily is decreased social anxiety among young adults who eat fermented foods and missing link found between brain immune system, major disease implications. I mean, how long have we known about this? This is not new. The gut has always been at the center of the immune system and towards mental health. And I think the biggest thing, and my question to you, is some of the solutions for people. And I'd love to get into them as well. I know about four or five things everybody should be doing. Well, let's talk about that for a minute, how really all these people think they're depressed and even schizophrenics a lot of the times. What happens is their gut health is just in shambles. So my question to you is, uh, let's talk about that for a minute. Oh, man, not sometimes, all the time. Autism, schizophrenia, mental health issues, pretty much all of them have a digestive health component. And that's why it's so important, number one, to start to supplement with good bacteria. Probiotic supplements are probably the most important supplements you could use. And by the way, for anybody interested in learning more about supplementation or using supplements or uh, getting on a good nutritional supplement program, check out InfoWarsHealth.com, InfoWarsHealth.com, or call 888-789-9277, 888-789-9277. Ask them about the probiotic program products, the Biolumin Nightly Essence product in particular, the Fucoid Z product, and liquid nutritional supplements. And this is, these three, these three factors all play a very important role when it comes to gut health. Number one, uh, the bacteria in the gut. And this is so fascinating, Anthony. I love how you caught on to this uh, because this is where the digestive system, uh, this is where bodily health begins to break down at the digestive system level first. I call this the triangle of disease. And it begins in utero, in the womb for many people, and then it, it, it really heads into the disease process in earnest, believe it or not, when we're born. Why? Because for most of us, when we're born, we don't get the, 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 uh, uh, the breast milk that we need that nurtures and sustains these bacteria. And for a lot of folks who are born cesarean section and one out of three births are cesarean now, uh, the baby doesn't get the, the, uh, the benefit of the bacteria that are supposed to coat the baby at the, the, the fetus as it comes through the womb. Cesarean sections bypass this coating and then the, the baby's not breastfed. From that point forward, the gut bacteria become compromised. So the, the breakdown process 
process, the physiologic breakdown process begins at the digestive system level and it begins woefully early. Now, second important concept when it comes to helping the gut is to use liquid nutrition. And by that I mean soups and juices and liquid nutritional supplements using, I talk about bone soup where you take a chicken and you drop it into a pot and you let the meat dissolve into the water and you let the cartilage dissolve into the water. Very, very important for the immune system. Also, vegetable juices, get yourself a high-powered blender and making sprout juices and broccoli juices and cabbage juices are powerful ways to help support gut health. And then finally, using liquid nutritional supplement drinks is a great way to bypass digestive problems and get high-powered nutrients right into the gut, especially brain nutrients. The brain is especially dependent on water-soluble nutrition, specifically electrolytes and the B vitamins. It's, of course, also important, uh, dependent on fat-soluble nutrients. But the problem with the water-soluble nutrients is we excrete them when we urinate. And if they're not replaced on a regular basis, it's very easy to become deficient in these substances. And so replacing your water-soluble nutrients in a liquid fashion throughout the day can be not only important for the entire body, but specifically important for brain health. Between standing Staying away from problem foods, getting on a good pro probiotic supplement like the Biolumin Nightly Essence, and again, you can find out all about these products at InfoWars.com or by calling 888-789-9277, getting on a good probiotic supplement, using fermented foods, using fiber to help support the probiotics, and then making sure you're getting enough liquid nutrition, you can go a long way, and I mean a long way, towards reducing almost all all psychiatric uh, symptoms, whether we're talking about massive psychiatric disorders like autism or schizophrenia, or just something like forgetfulness or, uh, or uh, depression. And by the way, if anybody's in a nursing home and dealing with Alzheimer's dementia, nothing is more powerful support for supporting brain health than the B vitamins and helping, with the digest helping support digestive health with good bacteria hey. probiotics. Hang on right there. Ben Fuchs is going to come back with us with some more excellent advice. Also, we have Anthony Gucciardi from March. Natural Society. Joining me are Anthony Gucciardi from Natural Society and pharmacist Ben Fuchs. Now, earlier in the program, I was talking about how the Supreme Court's jumping out of its jurisdictional uh, boundaries. But typically, the way that happens is with bureaucracies. We've seen the FCC uh, assert its control over the Internet recently. And now we see some very troubling signs that the FDA is going to start making moves against nature paths. Uh, natur uh, naturopathy, I guess, is how you how you say yeah. it uh, uh, but Natural. we've also seen them coming after supplementation but of course they're not going to say anything anthony about gmos they're going to give that a pass but they're going to come after natural treatments natural sub uh, supplements uh what do you know about this uh other than the fact that this is something we've seen the government do before all this regulation is in the same vein and in the same line as the tpp right they know they're losing the battle because monsanto for example is losing money last fourth quarter 2014 shedding money losing 128 million i believe it was mcdonald's is losing so much money now every single month that they won't report on their losses anymore that's mm -hmm. how bad it is for mcdonald's so they are already losing the battle and their only answer now is if they can't just credit it if they can't put out phony studies about how organic is the same as conventional which they tried to do by hiring one of the people that uh <laughs> believe it or not was one of the guys that stood up for big tobacco saying that cigarettes didn't cause heart, cancer, That's right. heart disease. That's right. Yeah. right. So they tried that, and now it didn't work. Organic is booming like crazy. I've talked to the farmers. They're forced to import international organic produce because they can't keep up with the demands here. Wow. That's how big it is. So what they're going to do is they're going to try and force it down our throats. Yeah. They're going to come in with the regulations. They're first they're going to get the uh, naturopaths, right? Because mm -hmm. it's a small sector. It's a small group. But if they can get them, then they can go towards even alternative medicine in general. Mm -hmm. And specifically, the TPP, of course, would ban GMO labeling. And Monsanto is more than happy about that, obviously. Mm -hmm. That's the way they're going to do it. Because of the fact that we are winning the battle, they're going to start banning everything, regulating everything, and just taxing us out until they believe they can shut us down by force because they already tried intellectually and we won that battle. Yeah, they don't even want to fight it at the local level. They want to fight it at the national level. They just had France ban uh, glyphosates. And uh, so they can, they can go with this transnational uh, committee with their investor state arbitration process. And they can say, hey, if you're going to uh, put labels on our products, they've already done this with uh, some regional trade agreements uh, in Australia. They changed the labeling on uh, tobacco, and they said, well, that's hurt our sales, so pay up billions of that's dollars. Right. That's the way they're going to do it. They're going to hold that gun to the head of the uh, individual countries. And, of course, if the countries say, no, we're not going to do that, then they're going to say, 
well, then you're going to be excluded uh, from uh, trading with the rest of the world. We're going to put confiscatory uh, 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 tariffs on goods coming in and out of your country. We're going to kick you out of this trade agreement. That's the kind of gun and the leverage that they've uh, got on that. Uh, uh, ben Fuchs, what are your comments? Here's the bottom line. We don't need the government. We don't need naturopaths for that matter. We can do all this ourselves. You know, the human body is a healing system. The human body knows how to heal. The human body knows how to repair itself. The human body knows how to build. What we have to be doing, if we're not feeling as well as we should or somehow not accessing these built-in systems, is number one, simplify. And that means focus on food, focus on blood sugar, and focus on oxygenation, making sure you're oxygenated. Between food, blood sugar, and oxygen, you have the three major causes of bodily breakdown and lack of health uh, from a physical perspective. Now, the emotional and the, emotion, the emotional and mental aspects, and even a, ultimately spiritual aspects, always need to be addressed. But from a physiologic perspective, between the, 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 the digestive system, the blood sugar system, and uh, oxygenation, you have the three major causes of disease and the three major ways that we stay healthy, none of which require the medical model, none of which require a naturopath, none of which require Obamacare or any government intervention. Between eating less food, patching up the gut, making sure we stay away from sugar in the corporate swill, making sure we're oxygenating correctly and getting on a good nutritional supplement program, we can do it ourselves with the, with the divine force that's built into all of our cells and built into the human body. So I, I, to me, I don't pay attention to what the government is doing. I take care of my own business. And my own business when it comes to my health or the health of my family is to make sure we're eating correctly, we're on a good nutritional supplement program, we're staying away from the corporate swill, and we're oxygenating by sitting on the couch and practicing slow, deep breathing on a regular basis, not to mention using psychological, mental, emotional, as well as spiritual strategies for health, none of which require the government. That's a great. That's a great point. Yes, absolutely. As long as they don't prohibit or force stuff on us, that's the thing that we're concerned about. We look at them uh, taking away our informed consent. And of course, there's two different sides to that. One of them is they can force you to take things, and then the other part of it is that they can prohibit you from getting access to certain things. So that's that's, well, that's something we're always we're worried about. That's what you were talking about before the break. We were talking about dirty blood. You know, mm -hmm. all disease is preceded by dirty blood. The blood is the sacred space. Nothing is supposed to get into the blood unless it's been vetted. And this is the problem with vaccinations. They bypass the body's uh, safety mechanisms for protecting itself, for protecting the blood, and stuff gets right injected right into the bloodstream. This is this is very dangerous stuff. And if there's a, a, a major epidemic of some kind and you need a vaccination, that's one thing. But to have a series of vaccinations that you're just going to stick into a human being's bloodstream willy-nilly, it's playing with fire. It's not right. And for the government to compulse people to, to comply is, is just absolutely egregious. And we really need to be doing something in, in terms of uh, speaking up and fighting about this. I don't know how it got through in California. I really don't. How do people accept this in California? Uh, for for yeah, the life of me, I don't know how this thing passed. Well, you know, these bills appeared all across the country. We had 20 of them here in Texas, and we were able to shut those down. What they're doing is they're ostracizing people. They're ostracizing people, uh, putting us off into ghettos, whether it's our jobs, whether it is school. They're saying, well, you still have a choice. You know, you can stay in this little ghetto that we're going to create for you, or you can take what we're going to demand that you take in order to move around in society. That's the, the uh, really awful way that they're handling this. Uh, Anthony, Somebody you had something said. you wanted to ask uh, Ben Fuchs about. Yeah, you know, you talk about informed consent, and you talk about the government kind of not paying attention to what they're doing. I would love to be with you on that. My, my biggest issue is that so many people don't know what they're eating. You know, they have no idea what the government is allowing in their food because it's not on the labeling, right? They don't know they're eating GMOs. They don't know they're eating high fructose corn syrup, which is full of mercury because they change it to corn syrup or they can't change it to corn sugar or whatever it is. And it's about this article, too, that you sent over. Few people heading towards diabetes know it, right? So few people yeah. heading towards every disease know it. No one knows it. They, they just wake up one day and they're, they're crying. And they say, you know, if something's wrong, go to the doctor. Oh, oh, my God, I have cancer. It's almost like they had no idea. And I've talked to people yeah. who have diabetes and they say to me over and over again, I mean, I was eating healthy. I said, well, what were you eating? Oh, you know, I was I was eating fruit every now and then. I was I was eating uh, those lean cuisine meals or whatever. You know, total total junk that's full of additives that are known to cause right. diabetes and killing the gut flora. And they don't know it. So you know, right. how many people do you think are <laughs> thriving themselves with bad things and giving themselves diseases right now and have no idea? It's a big problem. First of all, you have to be a label reader, but you can't even go by that. Uh, one of the most important health strategies you could use to get to your point here, to address your point, is eating less food. 
and also fasting and not participating in fast food and lean cuisine. You know, if it comes in a box, you probably don't want to eat it. If they sing a song, you know, in the commercial, you definitely don't want to eat it. If there's a cartoon <laughs> character, you want to run, okay? They don't put cartoon characters and they don't sing songs for broccoli or for Whole Foods. And, of course, even broccoli with pesticides and with soil depletion isn't going to be, isn't going to be the same nutritional, is going to have the same nutritional, pack the same nutritional punch as broccoli should, but it's a lot better than lean cuisine and, and, and packaged foods. It's very difficult to get quality quality food in, uh, once a food has been, or get quality once a food has been processed. The, the processing process degrades food quality, and once we start ingesting or living uh, primarily on these kinds of foods, there's no way that we're not going to be exhibiting nutritional deficiencies. If it, come in, if it comes in a box, it comes in a package, if it's heavily marketed or heavily advertised, that's a food you want to stay away from. And eating less food is another strategy, a very important strategy. Technically, they call that caloric restriction. And study after study after study shows that inflammation drops, the immune system improves, uh, energy levels improve, longevity increases, cancer symptoms decrease, autoimmune symptoms decrease, simply by eating less food. We live in an empire of food where people make billions and trillions of dollars off of the kind of food choices that we make. The food industry, the processed food industry, is a trillion dollar business. In fact, Fortune Magazine has a, has a great cover story this month on the, food pro, on, on the food processing industry talking about how they're being forced to become more responsive to consumers' demands for, for good food, for organic food, etc. Nonetheless, the less food we eat and the less we interface with food processors and with, with packaged food goods and fast food, for that matter, the better off we're going to be. You know, it's really crazy, too, because at the same time, in our, in our primal brains, we see an apple. And I've talked about this because it's so crazy before. You see an apple, and you immediately assume it's healthy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're just wired that way. You see broccoli, like you were saying, and you think it's healthy. But in this new food paradigm, that's not the case. I mean, on kind average. like Snow White's apple. You know? Right, right. <laughs> I mean, you, you could eat organic potato chips that are probably more healthy than that apple. Not just because it's lost its nutrients, but it's because it's been sprayed with... DDT or 2,4-D or something like that that is known to be giving you cancer. And the World Health Organization just announced that last week, by the way. DDT, four times increase in breast cancer, gives you cancer. 2,4-D, also across the board, gives you cancer. So this apple that you're eating is not just an apple. And it's actually hurting you and killing you if it is, in fact, sprayed with these chemicals versus something like even a potato chip. Mm -hmm. And that's the crazy world we live in this, these days, and it's so challenging to explain to people. You know, they modify things, even like roses, you know, they've, they've modified them for appearance to where they've lost their fragrance. And you look at this with, with uh, apples, they don't want them to spoil, they want long shelf life, and they want it to look good. So they're doing everything they can uh, to manipulate that genetic modification so they don't turn brown when you cut them. Yeah. I mean, you know, you name it, it's, it's, it's all there. It's hard to know what to eat. It's almost impossible. That's why the less you eat, the better off you are. You know, take a big breakfast, for example. You know, most people think, oh, you got to eat a big breakfast, right? You got to even that you have to eat breakfast. Where did that come from? Where did the bacon and egg come? Bacon and egg breakfast come from the tra traditional breakfast that we all indulge in every morning. Where did that come from? Well, it came from Edward Bernays, uh, the guy who wrote <laughs> the book Propaganda back in the 1920s, who was Sigmund Freud's uh, nephew. You know, we get propagandized into eating behaviors. We get propagandized into eating certain foods. The food pyramid is a classic example of that, or the food plate, as they call it. The food pyramid, the food plate, is not based on the kind of foods we eat. It's based on lobbying groups, and it's based on what lobbying groups and in the dairy industry and the meat industry and the processed food industry, uh, what they uh, have decided that is important for us to eat based on their profit margin. So you're absolutely correct. It's almost impossible to know what to eat. The best strategy is to eat a lot less food and eat simply and uh, not just eat less calories, but to eat less processed food. So uh, when you talk about apples and you talk about fruits, you know, these things are obviously genetically modified, but they've been genetically modified for eons and they've been especially gen been genetically modified to have lots of sugar in them to be super sweet. You know, those apples, that apple, that beautiful apple, apple that's uh, on the screen now, that didn't exist 300 years ago or 400 years ago. Apples were little crab apples. You know, we grew up on small pieces of fruit. We grew up on, on fruit that didn't have a lot of sugar in them. Sugar for many, for many millennia wasn't available. It's only been the last two or 300 years that it's been available. And what, what's happened is, is because we have these hardwired drives for certain foods, specifically sweets and sugars, and for calories as well, uh, profit-driven uh, profit corporations have 
learned to prey and to exploit these hard driven dri- hardwired drives. You know that old commercial, you, I'll bet you can't eat just one. They were laughing at us. Of course you can't eat just one because it's, the, the potato chips are spiked with chemicals that uh, uh, compulse us to, to keep eating until the bag is gone. So taking control of our eating behaviors, as simple as that sounds, is so fundamental to good health. It's so fundamental to liberating us from a corporate, a government corporate paradigm that could care less about us or could care less about our families and could care more about extracting our funds from us. Not participating in the corporate swill, not participating by eating the corporate swill, driving by, not driving through, as I like to say. Yeah, you know, you see that all the time. It used to be that uh, years ago when I used to watch television, I don't really, my family doesn't watch anymore. It seemed like all the commercials were food commercials, fast food commercials, try to get you to uh, munch, you know, if you got something in the refrigerator or go out and get something. But of course, now most of the, the uh, commercials are pharmaceutical commercials. That's the, the amazing that. thing. You know, the, David, the food processing industry and the pharmaceutical industry and the, the cosmetics industry grew up together with the marketing industry mm-hmm. at the turn of the 20th century when we started to understand how the mind worked. You know, the, we didn't really know about the unconscious until the late 19th century. Sigmund Freud was the first guy who revolutionized, revolutionized brain and mind science because he said there's these unconscious drives. There's these reasons why we do things that are based in uh, our old, uh, our, our upbringing, how we were, how we were brought up. Our, the ideas that we formed as children. And this was a revolutionary concept that marketers didn't take marketers very long to exploit. Within 20 or 30 or 40 years, all of a sudden you just had the first advertising companies and the first public relations companies. In fact, Edward Bernays is known as the father of public relations. And the first industries to exploit these models were the food industry, the drug industry, and the cosmetics industry. And they all grew up with he- uh, grew up uh, based on heavy advertising and heavy marketing. They got their funds initially from driving the message home that you got to eat this particular kind of food and you got to wear this particular kind of makeup and you got to use this particular drug if you're going to be healthy and you're going to be young and you're going to be beautiful. And to, we're now reaping the harvest of 120 years or even more of this kind of heavy, heavy marketing and it especially takes place in these profit intense businesses, the pharmaceutical business, the food business, and the skincare cosmetics business. Absolutely. You know, look at the cycle too. You just hit the nail on the head. I mean, the food industry makes you sick, which then fuels the big pharma industry to sell you painkillers or other pharmaceutical interventions, right? You know, I remember going into a clinic and a huge sign on the wall, I'm sure many of you have seen this, big blue sign says, you know, in Texas and in, in, the, in the United States, the number one cause of death is now painkillers. And as a precautionary measure, we're going to ask you a few questions if you're on them just to make sure you're okay. You know, we're not going to be intrusive in your life, but we just want to make sure. And, you know, I asked one of the uh, doctors about it and they said, oh, yeah, we can't hardly do anything about it because there are so many doctors that will just hand them out like candy. Many of them ultimately lose their licenses. But we're talking about 12 plus million people that just take painkillers for fun. Well, they tell you in the commercials, ask your doctor about this. You know, you, you want, they push you to push your doctor to give that to you because it's going to make your life better, in spite of the fact that they rattle off all these serious consequences very oh, yeah. quickly in the uh, commercial. Oh, Just okay. ignore those. They call it direct-to-consumer advertising, mm-hmm. DTC advertising, and it really didn't get going until, I believe it was the late 1980s or the, maybe the early 1990s, and it was actually kind of a big scandal when it first started. Drug companies weren't crazy about it, and doctors weren't crazy about it, but as it turns out, it became a big win. It, it created a huge windfall for, uh, for the drug companies. What ended up happening is drugs became branded, so people had their favorite drugs, and drugs became like Happy Meals, and people would identify with certain brands of drugs. This is this false choice. Uh, of cereals and, and crackers and prescription drugs is something that we see all the time it, when it comes to corporate pushed products. They create a false choice. Why do you think you have so many different uh, brands of cereal? Do you think they're all that different? Do we need 100 different brands of cereal? Do we need 100 different types of toothpaste? Do we need 20 different types of antidepressants? No, this is a way that we create identity. This is a way that marketers Hang on, Ben. We're going to go to a commercial break. We're talking to Anthony Gucciardi and Ben Fuchs. Of course, Ben Fuchs's websites are brightsideben.com and pharmacistben.com. When we come back, we're going to talk about some other things that you can do to take control of your life because that's ultimately your choice and you have the ability still to take control of your health. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. We're talking to pharmacist Ben Fuchs and Anthony Gucciardi of Natural Society. And of course, uh, 
a lot of us are amazed that uh, California just signed into law this bill that is going to uh, essentially mandate vaccinations, uh, ostracize children so they can't go to school if they don't get their vaccines on the schedule that the pharmaceutical companies and the AMA have dictated to them. But of course, there's been things that have been mandated into our food supply, uh, dumped in without our consent, things like fluoride that they just dump in massive amounts, mass medicating the society through the water supply. I mean, how stupid is that? Even if it was something that I, I didn't know was harmful, to mass medicate the uh, pop population by just dumping it in the water, you can't control the dosage with that, Anthony. And you got an article that uh, just came out about that as well. That's right. So, you know, a lot of bad things have been happening with the TPP or a lot of a lot of bad things. Right. But at the same time, we're achieving a lot of victories with the World Health Organization saying that Monsanto's Roundup, which contains glyphosate, is causing cancer and mm -hmm. DDT and 2,4-D, as I spoke of earlier. And I had actually forgotten that I'd written this article late, late last night when I saw it come out. A new scientific review found there was zero evidence, no evidence that water fluoridation actually prevents cavities in any way, mm. in any way. Mm -hmm. They said topically, as we do know. There is some benefits because what fluoride does is it kills everything, including you. <laughs> so this ties in to the Harvard study that came out in 2012 that we told you about, in which the quote from the Harvard researchers said, the children in high fluoride areas had significantly lower IQ than those who lived in low fluoride areas. So these researchers were concerned by that and they said, well, is there really any benefit to it though? And they looked at all the studies. This was a meta-analysis, so they looked at all the studies and they said, well, there was 73 different studies, I believe the number was, but all of them pretty much resulted in no evidence of helping prevent cavities in any way. So this is groundbreaking. And, you know, the government did just reduce fluoride levels in 2015 in June. So mm -hmm. this was very recent. They reduced fluoride levels across the board, most likely because they knew about this study coming out and also because Harvard study, which took them three years. But this is huge. And this was in Newsweek. This is where I found it. But this isn't being picked up enough. I mean, this is major, major news. It yeah. has no evidence that it's preventing cavities. So why is it still in the water? We've had uh, the Harvard study that says that uh, fluoride in a high enough concentration reduces IQ. We've had the British studies where they looked, uh, epidemiological study where they looked at different areas uh, where they fluoridated the water, others where they didn't. They noticed a big increase in ADHD. Uh, pharmacist Ben Fuchs, what do you think about this? Because you're a pharmacist. I mean, how do you control the dosage of something even if it were safe and effective? How do you control the dosage when you just dump you it into the water supply? You don't. You know, when <laughs> I was, in, uh, you know, in the pharmacy, they have uh, sodium fluoride 2.2 milligrams as a prescription product, and it's regulated, and you take it in a controlled dose. It's regulated as, as a legend drug, the same fluoride that's in your water. So, yeah, you're exactly right. How do you control the dosage? It's great, Anthony, that they lowered the, the concentration, but what about people who are drinking a gallon a day or a half a gallon a day? How much fluoride are they getting? Not to mention the fact that fluoride is a brain drug. It affects the brain. Who were the first people to use fluoride? Uh, the Nazis and the Russians uh, when they were working on manipulating the brain uh, of, of people in concentration camps and, and uh, in the gulag. The same fluoride that we're feeding our babies and we're, we're drinking ourselves. You're absolutely correct. Fluoride is a, a cytotoxic element. It kills cells. That's all you need to know. Why would you take a substance that kills cells and put it in the water? Is there no better way to help strengthen people's teeth? Are our teeth so, did the divine force or nature or God make our teeth so weak that only a medical intervention like fluoride can help strengthen our teeth? This is absurd on the face of it. And you haven't even talked about chlor uh, chlorine. You know, is chlorine the best way that we can detoxify our water? What about uh, ultraviolet detoxification? What about ozonation of water? What is, what is fluoride and chlorine doing to probiotics and good bacteria in the gut? So uh, personally, I drink distilled water. Uh, I don't want to go near fluoride and chlorine. If you are drinking a lot of fluoride and chlorine, that's all the more reason to get yourself on the Biolumin Nightly Essence and a good probiotic supplement. Make sure you're eating enough fiber and getting enough vegetables supporting gut health. Thank you so much, pharmacist Ben Fuchs and Anthony Gucciardi, Natural Society. Again, you can get more information at brightsideben.com and pharmacist.